Welcome back to Razm Afsar TV. Today, I'm really happy to have back one of our members who has been very, very dedicated and is Hayden. Hi, Hayden. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Ostad. How are you doing? Oh, thank you very much, Hayden. Good to have you back on the channel. I mean, you are already on the channel. You have been with many videos showing, I mean, back in, the, in, in an interview with you, Hayden. Um, Hayden, today we are going to talk about the concept of martial arts. First of all, um, you know, there is, I'm not saying disagreements, but different opinions, what martial arts are. And people have a subjective interpretation of that. What is true you? What do you think? What is martial art? A martial art or martial arts in general? Hmm. So to me, martial arts is like a dodecahedron. So if anyone doesn't know what that is, that's a 12-sided object. There's many faces and corners and angles to it. A lot of people have a singular view. Some people emphasize the art. So you see Chinese martial artists, and they're doing they're they're swinging around spears and swords that are made out of aluminum, and, it, and they're it's like almost like a whip. Yes. That example would be the art, the technique. Um, but to me, a martial art is not to be cliche, but it's the mind, body, and soul. It's the trifecta of those three. Um, so to me. It's more akin to a fighting art. So you have your technique, you drill them, you train them. You have your curriculum based off the techniques. Hopefully they're effective. That's a whole nother discussion about effectiveness. And then, so that would be more the body part. You have the technique and then you have the strength and conditioning, which you see in some of the videos I've showed. I'm like, ah, I start burning out. That's part of it. And then you have the mindset. So Rasmussar and then Rasmussar, we have Javan Mardi. Yes. And then Japanese martial arts, we have Bushido. And the list goes on. So then you have the mindset. Um, set of ethics, etiquette at, at, at the club. For example, we had a, a wrestler Friday that was a little bit disrespectful. So you have to deal with that as etiquette applies to whatever martial art that you're studying i know in judo with my i had an old coach from colombia his name was gustavo sanchez he's actually out here in north carolina i should go find him you probably think i'm stalking him though um colombian guy really short really really talented judoka if anyone ever did anything disrespectful and he caught you and he he was a hard ass about it You'd get put in a throw line. Do you know what a throw line is? So that means everyone in class throws you as hard as they can, probably more than once. So if there's 40 people in the class, you're getting thrown a minimum of 40 of 40 times. So etiquette is part of the mind. And then, like I said, ethics and morals. So just like um, Shihan Oyama said, without Bushido... If you're training someone karate or any other style, you're tra you're making a monster. You're making a, an animal. Yeah. So that 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 plays into it. It's not. It's um. That's what to me separates martial arts from fighting arts. Because fighting arts, you can still learn. You can learn in a military fashion, and you see even modern militaries today, they're lacking. A lot of them will lack morals and ethics. You see it in modern wars, soldiers killing civilians, executing people, showing videos of them torturing people. So that would that to me, that's where the split between fighting arts and martial arts is, is that because in martial arts, in my opinion, in order to be considered martial art in my eyes, you have to have a form of etiquette, respect and morals, which will differentiate to fighting arts because you don't necessarily need that to be an effective fighter. Look at all these show business guys in UFC that are complete asses. I mean, they're probably not in reality, but on the t on the television screen. And of course, some of them have done some things in reality that are not good. But that's where it splits. And then, of course, the soul um, that is like to me is your dedication to it, 
and I think that tie, the soul it kind of ties into the mind and the body aspect as well. And it's um, dedication, meaning it's almost religious. A lot of martial arts are um, not to the point of being cultish, because then that there's a lot of martial arts that become cultish. Yes. So it's a trifecta of those three things, in my opinion. Let us just before we move on. Thank you very much. Uh, martial arts, which become cultish. And what is a cult? Could you describe, in your opinion, when does a martial art become like a cult or cultish? All right. So mind me, I'm just sweating because it's very hot. So I do apologize for that, for the towel. But um, when a martial art becomes cultish, a lot of it is the it'll start with the teacher, the leader, right? Just like any other organization, you get a leader. And he, he, he shapes these young minds, usually younger. He shapes their minds, and then they begin to idolize him. Um, I think part of it is culturally, too, because yes. I've noticed different cultures will idolize someone from their culture. Um, an example would be Manny Pacquiao, the boxer. If you've seen his entourage around, I've seen it in person around him. They idolize him like as if he's a deity at times. At least it seems that way. <laughs> really? Now, it starts with the leader shaping these young minds in a way indoctrinating him. I mean, any teacher in some way is going to indoctrinate you a little bit because they're teaching you. There is yes. there, there's some level of indoctrination, good or bad. And it, and, it, and it starts with these leaders. So they're shaping these young minds mm -hmm. and they're putting these ideas in their head. And then they're they're making it they're centering it about them. A, a lot of times that I've noticed they center it about them, and then you see them believe everything their teacher tells them. For example, remember the 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 craze with the no touch knockouts, and their students were believing that they would faint over when they would do the. Yeah, they did. They believe, and they would they would believe it, and their students would faint from it. So they're like, oh, and then other people, and yeah. then it becomes cultish to where other people believe in it and what 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 is a cult what is a religion it's a large group of people with its with the same belief the same faith in something and that happens with any organization not just a martial arts organization but when it, it comes to martial arts it's just like any other cult it starts with a key figure or maybe a handful of key figures usually one though and then it branches off from there and it and it leads to indoctrination brainwashing and a lot of times you see them disconnect from others where you can only ever learn from me. You can never venture out. You can never do this, that, or the other. Yes. And that, to me, that's how I see it being cultish, how they, how a martial art can become cultish. Yeah. I remember, I remember there was also, you know, we have some of them, some of also in sword arts, right? Now we don't, mm. don't want to mention the name, but uh, just I remember years ago one of the members of that who had said that he his teacher keeps saying that uh, martial arts need to be subtle, and subtlety is important. And I said, "What do you mean subtle?" And he said, "Listen, for example, wrestling, wrestling, right, is not a martial art because you need power." I said, "Okay." Boxing is not a martial art because you need power. Wait, it gets even better. Kickboxing, kyokushin are not martial arts because they don't need muscle and power. So basically, he talked every realistic martial arts is not martial art because you need power. So, and I said, mm -hmm. what is martial arts? So martial arts, listen, you are going to laugh about it, that the guru comes, guru, he used guru, with minimum effort, effort he can just neutralize the most powerful fighters in the war and i looked at him and there i realized this guy has never ever taken a punch or a kick in his face or his body or he has never been thrown or choked you know and it <laughs> and i just said to him what the hell are you talking about wrestler haven't you watched ufc what wrestlers can do and you know what he said well ufc is not a real fight because if you, you know, and then I just said, I cannot even believe this. 
any judo, any jiu-jitsu, any wrestling, any boxing, kickboxing, kyukushin, even taekwondo match. Look, I'm talking about competitive taekwondo, right? Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Any match, going to a Shotokan, competitive Shotokan. I'm not talking about, you know, this, you know, you know what I mean. Any any competitive martial art would really, really, really humble hot. you. Yes. And... And it it killed. It was about to kill my phone. That's why in the middle when you were talking, I grabbed it. I tried to get out of the sun, and I was trying to cool it. But I have it working to where I have my air conditioning on, so it should be fine now. I have it out of the sun. I do apologize for that. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so, it's like 100 degrees here, like 40 Celsius. Oh, my God. 40. Yeah, it's, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Does it ever get, get cold in winter there? Yeah, it does. Um, it it can actually snow here too. Oh, okay. It's like um. So you're in you're in Bayern, so probably almost almost as cold as it gets there. Maybe okay. probably five ten degrees Celsius uh, hotter typically, but it can get pretty cold here, in North Carolina. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, let us just then continue, uh, Hayden, please. So then he was saying that subtle martial arts don't need power, and then a, a guru or our teacher can fight anyone with minimum effort. So what do you think about this statement? This is cultish, right? If he has a cult following, not to use reuse context clues, but just the statement alone, I wouldn't say is cultish. Now, if he has a large number of people that will absolutely believe it, then yes. Um, now, there is a small modicum of truth to that statement, albeit very, very, very small. Um, so, yes, minimum effort is key, but it's not the key to every lock. It's not the key to every door. Um, so it's just like uh, with Gano... When he made judo, uh, max efficiency with the least amount of effort. But he's he's missing whoever coined that um, phrase you just told me. They're missing that last word, effort, minimum effort. There's still some form of effort, still some form of using your strength and power to achieve something. Now, sometimes you get away with toying with someone and you're not even trying. You're not even breaking a sweat. That's sometimes, even against untrained people, sometimes if they're strong and they got some sense of balance, it can, it can, you, it can <laughs> so, still sometimes be difficult without even them having trained a lot. For example, training with my stepson, very limited, very limited training. And I went and did a judo sweep on him and he backflipped back to his feet and he oh. doesn't have any wrestling training, you know? It's just because the sense of balance and he's athletic, you know. That's that's right. That's right. That's clear, right? Um, yeah. This is this one, uh, which is, and then you also talked about Javon Mardi, Bushido Code, and all these things. Sometimes, you know, I really wonder if people understand what Javon Mardi and Code means, right? You know, people, they use mm. it just like a lip service. Do you think in today's world, these principles are important still? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, I would I would elaborate on the seven tenets to people to help them better understand. Um, just like when I asked you, what does honor the salt mean? Like, if you tell someone on the street that they're not going to, I didn't know what it meant. I had to think about it. I had to really think about it. And uh, yeah, I, I would say that those the the ethics of Javan Marty are still applicable and important for not just a martial artist, just a person too. There's a lot of wisdom in it, and I, I just think it's a very. And if you look across all ethical codes, they they all kind of mirror each other, like with Bushido yeah. as well. Bushido and Javan Marty are like this; they're so similar. Yes. Um, okay, uh, then let us go to, to Razmafsar and tell me, Hayden, about Razmafsar. I know that there are certain weapons in Razmafsar you are, which are your favorite. 
I remember one of them is a bow archery and one of them is a mace. Why? Mm -hmm. So I'll start with the archery. So lately I've been having a little bit of issues with it. So I've been kind of frustrated lately. Um, but overall, I really like the bow because I feel like it's probably the hardest tool to master besides wrestling. I actually think archery is harder in a lot of ways, Technic technically harder, maybe not physically until you start getting it into heavy draw weights. But even then, it's not as physically demanding as wrestling. Um, but I, it's it's so much technically harder, in my opinion, um, especially when you're doing pulling with your thumb, doing Sassani draw. Um, Cause there's no real way to aim it. You can aim it with Mediterranean draw. Um, so you're really using your instinct and your body position to hit your target. And you have to do everything so well just to get that arrow to fly somewhat decently. Any little thing that's off, it's going to affect your arrow flight. The further you are away from the target, the further off you're going to be from hitting it. So I think that's one reason why I like it because of, of how difficult it is. And the more practical reason why is because I would not want to get in a sword fight with someone. If I can stop the threat from advancing, that would be ideal for me. So that's probably the biggest reason why is the ability to stop a threat from advancing without having to get up and close and getting cut up and beat up. This certainly is a, an attitude you have as someone who served in the U.S. Army, right? In the Army in general. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just it's like when you're shooting with the firearms. You know what? what, you what stand what, up in the middle of a field. Yes, yes. And this is the mindset, of of course. So with the, with the archery, you get. But you know, on the other hand, the one of the problems with archery, I see, there are many, many. You know, people do not pay attention to physical fitness, like in these mm. historical sword fights. Even worse than that, in archery circles, right? This is something which I always uh, look at it and wonder why people in archery circles do not practice martial arts or they do not try to get stronger faster because I, I i'm sure archers back then military archery they were not only archers they could fight with different sets of weapons right? they were soldiers they were soldiers archery was just one of their tools exactly exactly just like just like um when i had that video a couple years ago with my modern kit i had knives on it i had other tools on it not just related to guns you know yes soldier whether exactly. I have a gun or not, exactly. mindset. Exactly. And then and on the other hand, you have two extreme sides. On one side is like archery, and then on the other hand, mace. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah, okay. I'm laughing. So... Because you know, even an ax, you need to have the right angle to hit, sword war. But with yes. mace, who cares about angle? You just hit as hard as you yes. can, you know? And that that's exactly why i like it i feel like the training curve is a lot less steep you only have to be strong to wield it and have some form of coordination yes if you have a blade or an axe you're gonna you, you to be effective more effective you're gonna have to line the edge up but if you're if you're in a stressful situation and you haven't trained your whole life a blade may not be your first may, may not be a good first choice no. Um, I mean, you look historically across not just the anywhere in the world, really, Native Americans, Europeans, Middle Easterners, Africans, they almost always had war club, a war club of some kind. Yes. Oh. Whether it be a mace or a piece of wood that they yes. carved or anything. Or if you're Musashi, you got a boat oar and beat the hell out of someone with it. So um, the drink curve is less steep. So that's why I like the only thing. Only thing I don't like about it is lack of reach. If it's a one-handed mace, at least for most times, it's lack of reach and piercing. I know some of them have spikes, but generally they don't. They don't. Generally. Some of them do. Generally, they don't. Yes, that's true. That's true. Okay, and this is this. And what about shamshir? Do you like shamshir, Hayden? I love. I love the shamshir. Um, 
Shamshir, to me, there's an elegance to it when you hold one. Even even just a, a store-bought one, like the one I have. Um, there's an elegance to it. And then when you're actually getting decent angles, you hear it cutting the air. Yes. It's it literally is. cutting the air particles. Yes. And there's an elegance to it. And whenever I hold it, really any sword, but I don't really touch any other swords except sabers, shot cheers. Um, I don't know. It, there's, there's a sense of elegance to it. There's a sense of refinement. It's not like me picking up a mace where I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to clobber you to death. Like, when, when I hold a shamshir, there's a sense of, like of refinement and elegance. Like you have to be technical with it. Yes, you have to. I agree with you. You have to be technical with it. But we're, we're forgetting my other favorite. Oh, Hanjar. The Hanjar. Yes. I this like way more delicious. than the mace. Way more oh. gorge than the gores. The, I like the Hanjar a lot. You know what Hanjar does? A lot, a lot. You know what Hanjar does, Hayden? You know you know that in Rasmus mm. you also have trapping, right? Trapping. But Hanjar is, yeah. in contrast to Pishkabs and Kar, makes trapping impossible. <laughs> this is impossible to trap, right? It is so yeah. hard to trap. You only can do it when you hook, and then you can eye jab. But trapping per se, like you do with card or you do with Hishkabs, is impossible because this damn thing is constantly cutting. There is no yeah. way to trap. This is a dangerous thing. Hanja is oh, so yeah. dangerous. So dangerous. I always say you have a card and the other guy has a Hanja. What are your chances? Keep him at distance, man. If he comes close, say goodbye. He gets you. Oh, right? oh yeah. It's yeah. a claw. It's a claw. You're literally adding a claw to yourself. A very vicious claw. The most vicious claw in the world. Yeah, very, very. And all those I, moves, you know? Yeah, very dangerous. I think Hanjar is the most vicious tool in Rastamafsar. I think it's number one in, in ruthless. You can't make it. Yeah. Just yes. because of how close you have to be and in in its design. Yes. That's why I like it, because when I carried knives in modern day, that I used the same grip as a hunjar. Oh. And I wish I would have known about it sooner, because I would have carried a scaled down version of it. Maybe not as big, but a scale. I would have carried two. I would have carried two scaled down versions of it, one on my front and one on my right side. Yes. yes. And I would do that, I think, with my knowledge today, if I was a soldier back then, I'd probably still carry two on a battlefield, one on my front and one on my right side. Why? Just because when you tussle with people and they try to wrestle you, and first thing I'm gonna do is try to draw a weapon because I, if I'm in a battlefield environment and someone's grabbing me, they're probably trying to kill me or hurt me very badly or capture me, which is probably worse than being killed. Um, especially back then, the things they did to people when you got captured. Um, now reason why I carry one on my front mainly is because both hands can access it and then of course my right side because that's my dominant side um and then no matter what the one at least the one on my front if I could only carry one hunjar it would be on my front the reason being both hands have access if you're tussling with me you usually you're trying to control one arm that's usually what happens when you wrestle too one arm is being controlled the other hand grabs you grab my other arm other hand grabs the hunjar so i almost always have access to it if it's on my front hayden let me just give you a I, word of encouragement I, 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 do you know why because i don't know if you're right-handed or left-handed because you can use both very well did you know mm. that that's very good because i myself i'm ambidextrous i can use both hands with any weapons and in Razmafsar, when people come, because from every other weapon style they come, they always tell them, concentrate on one hand. You don't need to concentrate, concentrate on the other, because they, you, then you get better and better in that hand. And in our system, it's completely wrong. Because if you only concentrate on the right hand, if you're right mm. hand, how can you do dual weapon wielding? You know, 
So you're not going to, but you mm. can do both sides very well. So are you right-handed or left-handed, Hayden? Um, when I was younger, when I was a little boy in Germany, there's a little village called Zell, Z E L. Mm -hmm. And I went to a Catholic kindergarten there. And I probably you probably know where I'm going with this. And they had these historical coloring books with castles and battles, famous battles in Europe and Germany. And I was coloring it with my left hand. And the nun saw that and didn't take too kindly to that. So I am right-handed by way of Catholicism, uh -huh. if that makes sense. Yes, I understand. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, I understand that. Yeah, I've heard of that. Okay, very good. Okay. And then, but you forgot one weapon. Where in, in European circles, they call it, okay, not only in European circles, but in general, yeah, mostly in European circles. They call it king of weapons, spear. Aren't you mm. interested in spear? Neyze. What's my opinion? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So my opinion on it. Um. So, I mean, it's the original weapon of mankind, really. That's probably the first weapon besides a knife or tool in general. Not just for for fighting, but hunting. Use it as a walking stick. You know, fishing. You can fish with spears. Um, my opinion on it, I I don't have a lot of experience with mine. I've I've dabbled with it. Um, I notice when I do use it, it it activates my these the top of my traps more than any other weapon. Maybe because there's a lot of pushing and pressing with it as well yes. when I'm drilling with it. I like it. Um, it's just a little bit big for me. Um, so I think if I experience it more, I'll enjoy it more, just like I have with the other weapons. I understand. I understand. Okay. Very, very good. But it's necessary. I would definitely carry one if, yes. if I was a soldier. I would definitely carry one. I, I am interested, however, in having a small spear as well like a five foot tall one oh. so i can feel the difference of a longer one and a shorter one yes that's right i mean the shorter one in persian is called nim neze nim means half neze means spear mm. so nim neze means half spear yes there is nim neze and javelin is called zubin so but it is for throwing to javelin yes yeah Yes, right. I should make some javelins. That would be an interesting video. Yeah. They were very powerful, Hayden. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. You're not going to survive that throw. If it hits you, that's it. Right? God, javelins are very vicious, vicious weapons. Really vicious. Especially vicious. if you got the strength to really chuck it at them. Yeah, yeah, of course. God, this is really... Um, Hayden... Now, I come to the next topic of our discussion is about armor. Hayden, when are you going to have an armor? We are all waiting for that. When I have the money for it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just when I have the money for it. Um, I think my next investment, I'm, I'm debating whether to get a helmet or Bazubond. I don't know which one I should get first because I keep going back and forth. But it, ideally, what I want is I want a brigandine, like a Persian oh. brigandine, like in the miniatures. Because yes. you have, you have the uh, how do you say chakra chakraina? Is that yeah. how you say it? Yeah. Chakraina. Yeah. So you have that. Yes. Excuse me. Charaine. Charaine. Yes. Give me. No um, I, every time I see something, I end up pronouncing it in Spanish. <laughs> um. Now. Yes. I want a brigandine because you see that all over the miniatures. Yeah. You see it all over. And I would like a Persian one. But the ones you see a lot of times, usually Mongolian. Mm. So I um, I don't know when, but I have to make a decision whether I get Bazuband or Helmet first. And then, and then 
I'll get the ladder or not the ladder, but the other stuff later. So I don't know when. Maybe I'll start a, a GoFundMe. Aiden needs armor to GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I personally remember Sergei, you know that Sergei uh, Govatsko, uh, he made all yeah. my armor sets. But the first armor he made for me was my Bazoo Van. So I had only a Bazoo Van and I didn't have mm. anything. So then I said, okay, what? Well, and I have, of course, this uh, fencing equipment, right? Historical fencing, like Hima guys use. So I have that. So I can, maybe I can use them with Bazoo Van. So you had my. Sergei Bazuban and the rest, and I said it looks so bad. You know this beautiful Bazuban with this yeah. <laughs> fancy equipment looks so ugly combined with these beautiful items, right? So I had Bazuban for a long time. Then I started to have a helmet. I had Bazuban, then helmet, and it took time again. You know, it's always like yeah. that. Then another yeah. piece, and you can. I mean, unless someone can really afford it, right, to buy a complete set, but every, I did it also step by step, like everyone does, right? I know, right? So <laughs> you buy one piece, then you buy another piece, then you buy another piece. That's the way it works, right? Well, maybe I should follow suit then. Yeah. Get Bazuban first, because then you can use them as bracers for heavy bows. So if it slaps you in the arm, it hits oh, the Bazuban. Yeah. You know what's so. the good thing about Bazuban when you do when you shoot, you're going to laugh about it. First time I had this Bazuban, this Safavid, my heavy armor, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, it works. So I had my Angoshvane thumb ring, Bazuban, and I had my heavy bow. Okay, it's not very heavy, it's 80 pounds, but still. And look, Hayden, still you need power. Look, I do this. <laughs> What happened to my bow? Is it broken? It was not broken. These heavy bars of hand helps you to draw. It's uh, nothing. Right? It's, what? You understand? Yeah. It, my bow is broken. It felt like a 30 pound bow. That difference. I'm serious about that. It, you just draw as if there is nothing. Then, you know, when you do these experiments, you realize. Okay, you have heavier arm, of course. You need muscles to have all those things. But still, it helps you. It really mm. helps, you, at least with me. Some people may say, no, it doesn't. But at least I can talk about my subjective feeling. It really helps you. This is the one thing. The second thing, you're right. You are not. You don't worry about anything. You have to steal, right? Yeah. You can have your arm. Nothing, right? Yeah, you can actually use those blocks. Yeah, of course. For, you know that. You don't have, have a bar. Yeah, Separ shield. Many people always think the surface is used, the small one. No, it's not the only thing. This is with Mazuban. They're together. You use mm. them together. You can, like we do it in Curator, right? You can block, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, there was a guy who said, You know that I'm into cutting, right? And said, yeah, but They can cut your arm, steal with armor. No sword will cut your muscle band. I can guarantee you. Yeah. Nothing will cut. Even an axe cannot cut it. Even an axe cannot cut. Sergei does this hardened muscle band. Nothing can cut it. Nothing. What, what can cut it, Hayden? What? what? A lightsaber. <laughs> yes, exactly. Nothing happens. So, you know, this combination, you can use this and then steal your yeah. arm. Is also, your shield is not only the surface together, right? But and it's also a weapon, too. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yes, of course. That's what, you know, is what, one thing which is very, very beautiful. And people who are only in game of tags or in dwelling forget what armor can do to your bo uh, body. You become really like a tank. You are mm -hmm. a tank. It's not just your what you have in your hand. Right, you have you you know that's I mean you're a, you're a wrestler you're an MMA fighter you're a striker you know if if you have a good uh, like Sergei does armor and even if you lose your 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 weapons I mean you still can run to the guy you understand what I mean? oh you yeah still, you can rush yeah it. like a boar yeah you can still do that but without armor of course you can't once you lose your weapon what can you do just imagine just imagine you're the poor guy. That gets like blast doubled by someone in complete armor and just have like soft armor on. He just puts his forehead in your chest and he grabs your leg and just through you. That's concern. Minimum. Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Hayden, at the end of our discussion, would you like to add anything to today's discussion? It was really lovely to have you here on this channel. I really wanted to talk to you, to have an interview with you. Do you want to add something to our discussion today? Um, to all the members and people who want to join Razma Sar, just remember that you have to be strong mentally as well, physically, and you have to have a sense of ethics. And any and Razma Sar, we are very inclusive, so there's no no matter where you're from, you could still be part of Razma Sar. And we're all welcoming. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Hayden. And uh, I wish you a nice day. Are you going to wrestle now? Yes, I am. Okay. All the best for wrestling and greetings to your wrestling coach. I will. I'll pass the word along. <laughs> you trained with a very good Greco Roman wrestling coach. Am I correct, Hayden? Yes. Yep. He's a international level. Greco-Roman guy in his early 20s. He's he's fantastic. You don't find that very often in America. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Greco-Roman is one of the best styles. Perfect, perfect. Thank yeah, you I love much. it. Yes, <laughs> magnificent. Thank you very much, Aiden. And I wish you a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.